Good morning, Vietnam! That's for uh, any of the Robin Williams fans out there. Uh, I love Robin Williams. He's the best. Was the best. Uh, hi. Happy Friday. Welcome back to another episode of What is James Wasting His Money On on Kickstarter Now? Uh, as you've seen, uh, as I look you over... You need an app for me to help with that. Try searching in the Apple Watch app on your iPhone. Okay, Siri. Thank you so much. <laughs> Uh, as I look over my pile of shame uh, up against the wall there, uh, I say the word waste because I'm not actually playing these games, even though I desperately want to. Uh, this is the life of someone who makes games and has currently 23 projects on the project board. But uh, one of the things I'm looking forward to this long weekend over Memorial Day is to play a bunch of games with my family, and I'm hoping to grab some games in with friends. So I hope you guys are doing the same. Uh, and, you know, because gaming's fun, and that's why we have games. We don't have them to curate and collect. We have them to play. So, anyway, we've got a lot to cover this morning. There's a lot of great games uh, on the docket, as they say. Uh, and, obviously, I love the thread where everyone gives me recommendations. That's so helpful. My goodness, there are so many campaigns to consider, like, I can only do so many in, in, a, in a certain... And, like, I try to keep this into an hour, right? Like, an hour. And so I think I can cover 10 to 12 in an hour. So if uh, one that you wanted covered is not going to get covered, sorry. Uh, but usually, also, campaigns are long. So I might get it in next week's episode. I'll be... Yeah, I'll be able to do one next week. Last week, I could not. I was traveling. So let's get on to the stuff, to the things... Cool. Philip, I don't know about 18X games, man. I mean, I'm, I'll check them out. I probably know it. I probably need to because I've never really played X, 18X games. Uh, they're just kind of intimidating to me. So, first up is Big Easy Busking uh, by Weird Draft Gra Grames? Games, who have done Super Hack Overdrive, Stellar Elite, Fire in the Library, and Dreams. I'm following them because Carl is awesome. Uh, okay. So it's already funded. Grab your instruments and hit the streets. Take on the role of a band of New Orleans street musicians and try your best to earn money entertaining the crowds in Big Easy Busking. Spend energy from your band members to complete the songs. Love the colors. Each crowd will enjoy the most. Learn new songs to keep your repertoire diverse. Yeah. And tip your bandmates to keep their energy levels high. Each crowd has different musical tastes, thresholds for giving tips, and amounts of money they give to the best band at the end of the night. Big okay. Easy Busking is played over three nights, with each progressive night drawing more crowds. So you must alter your strategies as the game progresses if you wish to keep up with the other buskers. Designed by Josh Mills, Big Easy Busking is a one to five player area control and hand management game with a twist. Bands take time to play their songs, so you never quite know how much energy other players are putting into entertaining the crowds until their song is completed on their next turn. Hmm. Can you play the best set, draw the largest crowds, and get the most tips in Big Easy Busking? So, right out of the gate, I, first of all, I'm from Alabama, and uh, Mobile and um, New Orleans all share like a nice place in my heart, right? Like that's... So this theme, automatically, I, I'm excited about. I love the color palette uh, because it's different. It gives you something different to look at. Um, I, I love anything that's area control. So that already has me super interested. And just what I like about that video, in a, in a minute and 20 seconds, I got the vibe of the game, I got the theme, and I got the overall general mechanics. I probably need to, d I'll dig in a little deeper later. Um, but like I got the idea of how the game goes so that if you're watching this and you're wanting to make a Kickstarter someday, that's a good, that's a good, that's a great video. Uh, let's check out the price. Uh, so we're, we know we're funded, so we're funded. Um, and there's still 13 days to go. I dig. So let's see, what is our price? These are typically the things I look at first. I go, I look at the creator and see what they've done previously. Then I look at, is it funded and what are they going for? Then I typically watch the video. Uh, at least some of it. And then I go check out how much they're asking for the game. Okay, that's kind of like my progression that you'll see 
normally. So it looks like the base game is 25 bucks. Awesome. Um, oh, there's a deluxe. So I want to investigate the difference between uh, the standard and the deluxe. It's, it's a $14 difference. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Got some stretch goals that we're hunting down, so that's great. Uh, what's in the box? Bang, bang, bang. I love the art. I love the I love the street art looking situation here. It looks like Rick Morales. It's awesome. It's an awesome picture. I wish that guy hadn't quit making movies. I loved Rick Morales movies. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. God, I watched that so many times as a kid. Uh, cool. That's a lot of text, so I'll have to come back and read all that later. But, so, for me, I, I've got Carla's games, right? I've got A Fire in the Library. I've got Stellar Leap. They're, they're, they're very solid, great games. So, I, I don't feel too, um, like, it's not, to me, it's not a big risk. If, I, if I'm familiar with a creator and I like what they've done previously and then I get this general look, sometimes I don't go real deep into, like, reading the rule book or anything like that. I just go like, cool, I know I want to support these folks, and it looks like a game that I'm going to be interested in. So we've got some reviews here if we could watch. Uh, what I really like about Big Easy Busking is that it plays quick, so plan carefully because there's a fine balance between knowing when to play a song, learn a song, and tipping your musicians to get those cubes back. And that's Tyler from The Bearded Meeple, one of the funniest dudes. God, that dude's funny. He's always throwing his red beard on stuff. So it looks like instead of cubes, you're going to... oh. I think I'm in. I think I'm in on that. So instead of the cubes, you're getting like custom meeples of the of the band instruments. Custom sleeves and 75 wooden custom meeples. I am in. Look at that. That's gorgeous. That is very pretty. All right. Oh, they've got some uh, social stretch goals we can help. Okay. So verdict on Big Easy Buskin is for $39. Hold on. Let me check shipping. Shipping's important. What is my total all in? I'm just like you guys. I have to, I have to know all the information. Shipping six dollars. They're obviously subsidizing that because shipping is not six dollars for this. So that means uh, the all-in is forty-five dollars for a deluxe with custom wooden meeples of, of of instruments. I'm in on that. I'm in. So again, like I said, I'm not doing these. I'm not going to do it live. But you'll, if you guys follow me on Kickstarter, you will get the onslaught uh, after the video goes off of what I do. Uh, from the campaign. So this one is getting a full back. Next up, Bites, a 20 minute interactive board game. Chad Deshaun. What has Chad Deshaun made? He made the Duchess. He made a gaming table. And, ah, on tour. I remember that game. There was something about that I didn't, there's a reason I didn't back it. I don't remember what it was, but I didn't back it. I don't remember why. But let's check this out because I know I've seen a, 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 a Something pop up during the week about this, and I was instantly interested. Three minute video, a little long, not gonna lie. Meeples in their natural environment. <laughs> I love the dude's voice. But this isn't just any picnic. Any picnic? No. no. This is Bites. It's a Bites. Minute board game for two to five players. Two to five. The jumbo sized wood ants look fantastic, but really, it is the human player that controls them. Human. Human. To move any ant they I'm having too much fun with this. The red ant is a picky eater. She only moves to apples. Also, persnickety, purple ant only eats grapes. Who wouldn't want to take a bite out of these dual layer, one and a half inch wide food tokens? Those look good, In not gonna fact, lie. It looks like somebody already has. I kind of want the game just for those tokens. I could use those for other stuff. Treads to their matching color. The human player that moved them is entitled to the food directly in front of or behind the ant. The humans mm. store this food until the end of the game when it is worth points. And points, after all, are what the humans crave most. We do crave points. How many points? Well, that depends. All of depends the points. Depends on which ants make it back to the anthill first. If a red ant is first to the hill, then apples are worth a delightful four points. Ah. But if the red ant is the last one home, then nature takes a harsher course. The apples rot, and they are worth nothing. 
Oh dear. There is no direct conflict in bites, but this scoring system makes the game very interactive for the humans. They are always the humans. each other, reacting to what the others ah, have done see. or might do next. Okay, so I think this is another game, or at least it's really close to other games. So, like, it's a race game. You know your color. You want your pieces. You want to finish as fast as you can because you make your pieces more valuable. But when you pick up your pieces, you can pick up an additional piece. So you're trying to gauge who else you think is going to win, when they're going to place. And it looks like I think you could pick up from that explanation in front or behind. So then you have a choice. Uh, based off where you think other players are at in the game and where you think they're going to finish. Um, interesting. Yeah, this is... It's, it, sounds, it feels a lot like uh, The Tortoise and the Hare, which is one of my favorite kid games. And I, I really... I, yeah. Love it. So let me go over here to... How much? Okay, again, so we checked out that. We checked out the video. It's overfunded by a good bit, So, and there's still 13 days to go. So good job there. Looks like the base game is $24, and uh, oh, you, you can pay another 13 bucks, and they'll give you extra tokens so that you can play double bites. I'm assuming that means just a longer game. Uh, and they have a package for all three. Yeah, I don't care about packages. So, cool. Yeah, okay. Each turn, move to any... Yep, take the food in front of you or behind. Yep. When ants reach the end of the trail. See, this is the type of game that I can play with my kids. And, um, and especially with, like, that mound and the, the, the food pieces and the ants. Like, my daughter will probably make up her own game with that. Um... It's really cold in our office. Like, our temperature thing is broken. It won't... The air, AC won't turn off. So we're all, like, having trash fires at our desk. Uh, chocolate gives you special powers. Oh, I didn't see that. So chocolate gives you special powers. And then there's random start cards. Tweak the rules. Every game is different. Okay. I like. I really like that because I was sitting here thinking, it's just going to be one of those race games, and that's fine for, like, an abstract game. But the chocolate having special powers and uh, random start cards giving you tweaks to the game is very nice. This is the type of game that I really like a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah. Kiki did the, uh, a, a preview. Nice. Hey, everybody. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to play Bites. I love her channel. Which is this cute game right here where you're going to be using these little ants. To oh, that looks so good on the table, too. But you don't know what your food's going to be worth until the ants finish their little ant race. On this ant okay, awesome. So, oh, Jeremy's in here too. Man, they did a good job. So they've got good coverage here. Uh, the components and the videos and this, like, this is, if you're making a Kickstarter, like, this is also a, 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 a campaign page that you can model yourself after. This looks phenomenal. Uh, everything's bright and clean. Love that. Uh, double bites. Those are the double bites if you want double. Uh, uh, bites is based on an 11-year-old game called Big Points. So, yeah, it, it, it obviously it's okay. So it is actually just a reskin of a game with probably some tweaks, I'm going to guess. They've got a timeline on there. There's the team. You know, team. I think this is a game that I, I definitely want. Um, I don't need the super pack. Or any of that so but i'm definitely interested in like this game so this is probably going to be i don't know if i'm going to get double bites uh if i want that later maybe i get that i'll probably just go in for 24 and then let me pick my country four bucks on shipping 28 dollars. that seems like a a really safe bet there so stamp of approval bites now this one you're going to see, I've already backed uh, at $47 because I've already talked a good bit about the 100 Tory. Uh, if you saw my video with Edo last, e earlier this week, I think it was Monday, you'll know that the story behind this is we considered this game early on two years ago for Druid City and my schedule was just too full. I couldn't make it work and I told Scott that he needed to put this with somebody who could help get it going and... Uh, we, you know, we help develop it and that sort of Find thing. Thirty-seven seconds. Garden in the nice. one hundred twenty. Step into tranquility as you pass through the gates. Travel from fountains to flowers to shrines, while meeting vendors, poets, and even samurai along the way. Lay tiles to create paths in this gorgeous board game. 
stroll through smooth, streamlined rounds, moving between landmarks, set collecting, mm -hmm. and getting help from those you meet in the garden. Easy to learn and teach. The 100 Tori is a joy to play. Cool. Uh, by the way, thank you for a 37 second video. I dig that. Uh, obviously, if you guys know anything about Edo, he has a long history of making games on Kickstarter and doing a great job with them. Uh, they're all very fun, very good games. Uh, my personal favorite of Edo's is uh, I really like Heroes and Tricks. It's a really fun game. Uh, you Herbaceous, Skull Hollow. I mean, Sunset Over Water. Oh, oops. Sorry, sorry, team. Didn't mean. <laughs> Whoopsie. Uh, so it's funded, and I'll go ahead and tell you, this game is underfunding right now. This game needs more attention. This is a fantastic, phenomenal game that is gorgeous and done by Vincent Dutre artwork-wise. So obviously, I went in for the $39 pledge. The game is awesome. So what you're doing in the game is you're laying down these paths, and you only have two tiles in your hand. And so you're looking at the icon that you have on the tile that you have available to you, and you're trying to make a path that connects to the same icon, but you wanna make it as long as possible, right? And you wanna get as many of those tour gates in between as you can because it gives you more, it helps you score more. Well, the problem is like you might identify a path that's like, say, let's say it's got like eight tiles in between it, and there's a bunch of tour gates in the middle. You're like, yeah, yeah, that's gonna be dope. I'm gonna get a lot. You go to put down the tile and you're like, wait, it branches off over here, and there's another one of those icons the same icon. So it's, it always bases off the shortest path that you create. So you're really like scouring over the map and like where do I get the best setup for what I have in my hand. The 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 interesting part is the game, like that's that sounds like a lot of AP, but it, it doesn't really get really AP analysis paralysis until the end of the game. So at the beginning, the map is small, right? So your choices are easy to identify and you're doing the best that you can. But then, as the video said, there are some powers that come into the game where you have, uh, let's see if there's a list of those right here somewhere. Hold, hold. I know there's a thing in the game. There's five of them. And the, the powers are really awesome. I don't guess it's on here. But, so like the poet could uh, you can put the poet on top of an icon and it blocks it so it's like that that icon's not there for that turn so then you can lay that down so like that uh, in my example if there was one that was three away you could put the poet on top of it now you've got a you've got a much better lineup that you can go hit so the game is an abstract but obviously as you see it's gorgeous and Culturally, the way that they, they apply everything and teach you about Tory uh, Gates and the history and the culture uh, behind it and all the icons and everything in the game is phenomenal. It's top notch. Uh, there's four pages in the rule book dedicated to all everything that's in the game and how it applies uh, to the culture. So I love it. And not just because I, you know, I touched it early on, but A, Scott Caputo just makes phenomenal tile laying games. Edo makes beautiful productions. This is a home run. This is, this is what, what, what my quote was. I'll read it to you because it's on here. Uh, my quote is, this is your next modern classic and it's absolutely gorgeous, 10 out of 10. Like, I don't have a negative about this game. I am so glad. Like, it's funny and it sounds weird, but I'm glad Edo got it and executed it like this because I, I don't think, I don't know what I would have done if we would have taken it all the way through, but like, I don't feel like you could make a better game than what this is. And I don't think it could visually be represented better. And I don't, I, it's just phenomenal. This is, a, this is a home run package. So, um, why do I not see this number going up while we're doing this? This is live. There's 19 of you on here. I want to see 19 more backers. <laughs> it's that good. Go get this. Do it. You will not be disappointed. You will play it a lot. Postcard Galactic. So Joseph Limbaugh has, uh, he's a local here in LA and I met him just the other night at Satine Phoenix's birthday party. He did a postcard dungeons before and he gave me a pack of the cards. I actually had backed that one previously. Um, it, the whole game is on a postcard. So uh, it's already funded. He'll mail you this pack of this, this, the game in an envelope and all you need is a D6 to play the game. How awesome is that? Hey, I'm Joseph Limbaugh, and this is my second Kickstarter, Postcard Galactic. Postcard Galactic is a board game printed entirely on postcards 
about the struggle between various factions to capture the throne of the Galactic Empire. It's an asymmetrical dice placement and resource management game, and it uses completely different mechanics from my previous Kickstarter, Postcard Dungeons. In Postcard Galactic, each card represents a different faction of the ruling class of the Galactic Empire. Each player chooses one of these factions, and every faction has different abilities, nobles, and victory conditions. Each player rolls six dice and places them near their faction card. On their turn, they can move a die onto one of their basic assets, spend resources to upgrade to a more advanced asset, raid an opponent's board, or use abilities from spaces they've acquired on their board. It's also possible to buy an asset on the board of one of your rivals, forcing them into an alliance and gaining access to abilities of their faction. The ultimate goal is to capture victory assets which appear on the right side of your board. They score more points than other assets, and the final value of these victory assets is dependent on the other dice you have on your board at the end of the game. So that's a basic overview, and obviously I'll be releasing a complete how to play video as I've done for my other games. Which, by the way, if you're interested in my other games, you can check out postcardgames.com. And that's it. Thanks for watching my video. Joe, the first thing I want to say is that it was a great overview of the game. And second, great job on the audio. So like a lot of times we watch these, if people are, are, are newer creators, they don't get good equipment to record things. Yes, by the way, uh, Connor, I am very cold. I explained earlier, the air will not cut off in our office and it is freezing. Uh, I'm going to start trash fire soon. Uh, that was a great video that explained everything. And... Uh, I, so I'm, I'm in for, because I have the previous games for nine bucks, but you can come down. I think he said you can add on the other ones as well. Um, so this is funded. This is going to be a great game. The other ones were fun. I remember them. Uh, I played those. They were, there, there they are, right there. Postcard Dungeons, played that. Uh, I, actually, I think Postcard Dungeons was the only one I got played. I, I didn't get around to playing the other ones, but Joseph uh, gave me this one the other night when I was at Satine, when we were talking. So I'm excited uh, to play these because I love these type of games, short, simple, easy, something I can do on my own um, when I just have the itch, but no one else wants to play a game and I can keep it in my backpack, play it wherever. So I, this is a no brainer. Nine bucks, you get the stuff and it's shipped to you. Just do that. Monstrosity Rampage. I don't know anything about this. Let's look at this. Who has made it? V v Vitus. Uh, ah, Dwarf 7, I remember dwar or Dwarves Fall. Uh, I remember that game, I have not played it, but I do remember it. So it's at least someone who has made a game and delivered it. Uh, it's not funded, 5,000 of 20, and there's only 83 backers currently. Let's, hold on, we're gonna watch the video, but let's see. A $65 Kickstarter version, okay. A hundred, oh, that's the retailers, uh, group orders. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Well, let's check it out. <laughs> Whoa, that's loud. Whoa. I can't move up there, Connor. I'd freeze. In LA, it's warm all the time. I love it. That was like a video game. We're defending the world from mad scientists. That is a video game. I'm so confused right now. Is this for a video game or a board game? Because the video made it look like a video game. Um, okay. I'm confused there. Not gonna lie. That told me nothing, showed me nothing, and confused me. Is there something that actually looks like the game? I mean, the art, the graphics and everything look good. I just, I mean, I guess that's the game there. Um, but is there anything that actually looks like the game? I like all the art. I'm like, I'm assuming those are going to be 60 millimeter. Those are going to be really big monster minis. Uh, we got some boards and cards. Your video didn't tell me how the game played. Like, if you one thing you notice, the previous four, everybody gave you some gameplay stuff that just like threw some graphics around. But I don't know anything. Like, you've got, I would say, thirty seconds, sixty seconds 
when somebody comes to a page. This is just how buying is. Like, right, when we buy stuff, we come to it and we're like, how quickly can I assess do I want the thing? Am I attracted to it? And if, if there's confusing things or, you know, you don't get to the crux, like, you're already showing me expansions and I still don't even know how the game plays or what it is, really. I mean, obviously, it's we're smashing towers or something. And it has big minis. They're, 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 we're definitely... It has a very uh, King of New York vibe to it. Like, I, they've definitely pulled the... Uh, they grabbed that art direction and ran with it. Hey, there's something that looks like a game on a table. Halfway down the page. Uh, pictures of playtesting. Well, it looks cool on the table. I... Here's a video. Man vs. Meeple did a Kickstarter preview, and they let Kara, Kara be on it, so that's that's a win, because she's better than both of those guys. Um, Let's see. So lots of videos to check out. Here's the rule book. Kickstarter edition. One of the things I do really like on most Kickstarter campaigns is the section that's like the how to play section with some graphics because like sometimes you might be in the office and you can't watch a video or you don't have time to watch a video and you if you can scan like a simple uh, one two three overview or you know like that's one of the things we try to do on title blaze and, and on grim forest and things like that when you're doing the how to play is use those gifts and quickly show in as few steps as possible the general overview i mean obviously it's not getting into the weeds but how do you quickly show the gameplay uh, looks like we will charge shipping after. Okay. Rough estimates. The following is ah. I was gonna say it's a it's a it's a it's a bad mistake if you throw up shipping. Say that though it'll be later and then not show the estimates. So they do have estimates. Uh, Sixteen to eighteen dollars for US. So cool, cool, cool. So uh, you know what for me. I'll probably this will probably be a, a buck because I have no idea how the game plays and I just scrolled the whole thing. I'm they're gonna force it looks like I'm gonna either force to be re, read the rule book or watch a video somewhere to figure out how the game plays. So I feel like that's a big mistake. That's probably tying into why the campaign's not going well, at least currently. So I don't know how to play the game. I don't know why I want to back it other than there's big stuff. Agizia? Am I saying that right? I'm from Alabama. If I'm saying that wrong, you guys can you can yell at me. Uh, oh, Connor, please keep me warm. My hands are like turning to ice cubes. Okay, so overfunded. Uh, stronghold. We all know who they are. So, uh, oh, I was following them. Or I am not following them. I don't know. And what have what they, they done on here? Aftershock, Turmoil... Space Cadets. Boom. Cool. Minute 20. Bam. A true classic returns. Agizia. Shifting Sands. I'm probably still not saying that right. I'll do the voiceover. Just, with updated gameplay and a beautiful new board. My teleprompter is going slow. Travel down the Nile, boat after boat. Each boat is placed further down the river, making every move strategic. The obstacles score victory points and advance on the grain and stone market. The colonnade, a new track, rich with I didn't get there in time. Statues, build low value bricks for the chance at huge in game points. Pyramid, place bricks to compete for majority bonuses. The Sphinx, collect hidden cards at the river's end. A completely refined experience with new levels of variability. Plus, the classic game. All in one beautiful package. Agizia, Shifting Sands. Ah. Uh, you know, cool. Uh, hey, I like, like this stuff. Uh, I like, like an Egyptian thing game. Um, yeah. Crew tokens, cool. Bricks, cool. But what are what are our prices? That that uh, that was the thing. Thirty nine bucks. Like that is the only straight up option you get. Bam, done. One option. There you go. And what does that say? 
uh, including all the milestones, shipping and taxes are not included and will be charged in the pledge manager. So 39 plus shipping and taxes, whatever that means. I don't know what and taxes mean. That's not typically said. Uh, so we've got some overviews and reviews. You've got a how to play. There's a draft rule book there. Um, from the peeps, milestones. Again, we don't have a graphic of how to play. At least we got some of that in the video. At least they like threw out some examples there that I read through. Uh, looks like shipping is seven bucks. Each additional copy included shipping 37 I don't know what that means that, that chart is confusing why wouldn't you just put the additional shipping amount I'm assuming they've added the but that doesn't mathematically add up I don't know what's happening there I would have to read that some more retailers release timing cool so like uh, it's a stronghold game so there's one thing here is um, you know you know it's funded so you know it's going to be in retail so I, I'm not sure if it does include all the milestones from the campaign, but it doesn't say if those milestones are um, Kickstarter exclusive. Oh, there they do, right there. There's a big sign right there, James. Uh, includes all components for classic, the game board on the reverse side, and the cards and the river cards and the grave tokens. So I guess if you want the classic on the back, then you need to do the you need to do Kickstarter to get that. I'm assuming the retail version is going to... Ah, Kickstarter exclusives. Right there. Uh, overlays, cards, classic, grave tokens, and a full stamp on the cover. Okay. So, um, I'll probably go in for a buck on this and research it some more. But if I can just get this game at retail, I'm probably just going to wait for that. Because I, don't, I didn't play the classic game. I don't know the old game. So, if it's fun, I can just pick it up later. Sorry. Or I might get it now. I don't know. You know, I get I get pulled in with the, the stuff and the things. Halls of Horror! Survival horror turn-based board game. My hands are freezing. I cannot say that creator's name, so I'm not even going to try. First created. Okay. We're not at goal. That's a really high goal for a first creation. So let's let's see what's up. Two minutes. Welcome. Oh, I like that. That's good. Hi, my name is Krzysztof Zielmba, and I'm the designer of Halls of Horror. It's a horror-themed last-man standing game for one to four players in which you will explore a randomly generated board and compete with others to be the first to escape a house filled with traps. We're all going to die. Hello, my name is Jacek Głowacki and we are iFan for All, a 10-year-old experience video games development studio. Uh, video gamer, okay, all right. Halls of Horror is our first tabletop project and we are extremely excited to bring it to gamers all around the world. Beware of the killer. Is that killer gonna get you? For a digital game we developed for Microsoft's Microsoft. Look out behind you! The prototype was so fun that we decided to keep working on it concurrently with the video game. And the two projects kept influencing one another throughout production. That's cool. Now we're hoping to make the game a reality with the help of you, the Kickstarter backer. Explore, fight, escape, survive. We hope to make Halls of Horror the best tabletop survival horror experience it can be. With a unique VHS-inspired art style, a lot of replayability in the basic game, further expanded with the stretch goals we've prepared, and a solo mode for those of you who'd like to face the deadly killer alone. The deadly killer alone. Who are we gonna do that? To bring this terrific horror to your table. We chose Kickstarter. Jason Voorhees. We want to provide you with the best product possible, and we have many cool ideas and improvements we'd like to see in the game. With your backing, we can make the board game adaptation of Halls of Horror a reality. Dig it. Forever. You gonna die, clown? Uh, 14k of 45. So got some 20 days to go. Got some. Got some time. Let's see how much they want. One dollar, five dollar digital art book, fifteen dollar STL files for for miniatures, 
One copy of Hall is $49. Uh, if we select, are they putting it in here? Do, 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 do. Shipping costs we charge after the campaign. Now, this is starting to become a more regular thing. So love to see your comments. Do you do you like that? Do you not like that? Do you prefer the shipping to be in there? Do you mind that if it's later? And it is helpful for a creator to be able to say, I'm going to charge this once I know, like, I've been able to build out all my stretch goals. I know more final weights. I've got, you know, anything that's changed, like, I don't tariffs. Uh, so you can m get a more accurate sh shipping cost and the shipping cost isn't in the Kickstarter percentage. What is this? 53, wait, 49 and 53. What is that? All digital, digital rewards. Okay. And then 55 and the 50. Oh God, what are y'all doing? Why is there, why is there so many pledge levels? 49, 53, 55, 57, 68, 190. That is a first time creator misfire don't do this to your backers like i don't even want to sit here and read all these and suss out all that like that's two dollar difference between stuff come on no 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 um cool so it looks like it's going to be an adventure board game where we flip stuff over discover stuff try to survive right we've played those uh it's got some minis kickstarter exclusive lex i don't I guess that's just that one that's exclusive, or maybe they all are. I don't know. There's the killer. It's like Casey from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles mixed with Jason Voorhees. Half man, half monster, or only a deranged sausage individual? Savage. That V looks like a you, kids. <laughs> yeah. Dude. Game components, got a lot of those. 21 reward cards. I mean, actually the price looks pretty okay uh, for for what they're putting in the box with miniatures and I like that. I like that little rotating thing there. That's nice. Oh, that's good. A D exit. Whoa. STL files for tokens in a dedicated dice tower for three for self 3D printing. That's cool. That's kind of neat looking. I like what they're doing here. That's cool. You know, 49 bucks is a pretty good price for this uh, with some exclusive content. I don't, what is the, why is there a $4 pledge? You get a soundtrack to download? Just throw the soundtrack in there, man. Make it a stretch goal. Don't make a whole nother pledge for $4. $2. Oh, good Lord. Two high-res downloadable digital files of dedicated game mats for self-print. Uh, uh, just, just make one. That's messy. Ah, here we go. So we've got some general rules. Players declare their actions for the turn in secret and reveal them simultaneously, choosing to move to adjacent room or explore the room they are currently occupying. I do like hidden action selection stuff. That, to me, is fun because I love the head games of am I going to do what you think I'm going to do or am I going to do something different? Obviously, we have, I've made a few games that center around that players explore rooms to find the exit weapons and items at the same time a killer moves around the board in search of victims at the end of the turn the first player takes on the role of the master of the ceremony and in addition to his action needs to direct the killer you can move him to hunt another player during the fight each player chooses to attack or escape they then roll dice and compare the number of successes they roll damage is dealt if you drop to zero hit points your participant is toast if you perish, you can still play as the master of ceremony and make sure nobody else escapes either. Uh, you can close off rooms to make the board more cramped, forcing players to fight, mix up the resources in the rooms, direct the killer's fury, and more. I kind of like this. Not going to lie. Uh, did you think he was going to hand you a key and tell you to have a nice day? I, I don't know what that quote means. I don't. Uh, I can't read that one or that one. So I don't know what those quotes mean. Um, okay, so we've got some... Whoa! Preview with Mandy? Dope! I've never... Mandy hasn't done a preview in forever. Maybe she has. I just haven't seen one in a while. I love Mandy. She's the best. Hi, everyone. I'm Mandy Hutchinson. The and best today hair. I'll be doing a preview of the game, Halls of Horror, coming to Kickstarter... May 15th, 2019. Hall of Horror is designed by Christoph Zeeb. Give me, give me some, Each character yeah. Has special powers. Then pick up a face down. I dig it. Escape. Okay, so I wonder if there's some like actual 
There's some learned plays, but is there actually like a full playthrough, like somebody actually playing the game? I'd like to watch that. Not not just review, but like actually play the thing. So, um, sweet. Shipping is going to be 16 to 20. That's... <sighs> That that jumps you up to seventy bucks for the game. So that I mean, uh, creators, I, I would recommend that you subsidize shipping somewhat, right? Because on Kickstarter, you're not selling a game at the wholesale price that you would during retail. So you're you're you do make a better margin. And so I would suggest to consider, and this is what we do, is you subsidize some of the shipping. Shipping unfortunately is obviously not free i wish it was i wish we were amazon and shipping just magically appeared and we didn't have to pay anything but we do and so it still comes into the decision of the buyer like right now i am a consumer and i'm looking at 20 bucks and 49 so i'm looking at 69 dollars for this game 49 dollars. i was real i was like yeah yeah i think so 69 i'm like ah and, and, and it, just, it just does. It does factor in. And so I don't know if it was $10 cheaper, would I be there? I don't know. And I also want people to make money, obviously. I, I, I'm a publisher. I want to make money too. So I understand your plight, but you've just got to make the most, uh, the most attractive um, proposition that you can. So I think Halls of Heart is going to be $1 for me, and I'm going to, I'm going to go back and watch some more videos on it and see if I can find any gameplay. Uh, and see, you know, are what are they doing different than these other type of games? That's the, that's the big thing for me. Like I like I, I like the the '90s, '80s, '90s uh, VHS vibe to it. I think that's kind of cool. And I don't have anything necessarily like that. But are they doing anything mechanically that's different? Uh, I, I get a little worried, especially for someone who I, I mean, I play a lot of games, right? Uh, a first time creator that is coming out of the video games, like how deep into the board game niche hobby are they and have they really played a lot of games is this game similar to other games because they just haven't played a lot of games so i just want to see some gameplay there kadama 3d boom from, from indie boards and cards they've been doing this a minute it's funded i like the card game so i guess if i like the card game i'm probably gonna like this a new perspective on the hit game Build your tree in 3D. I don't know what accent I'm trying to do. It's like a really bad redneck Scottish guy. With all new gameplay. Do I get to build the tree upwards? That's what I want to think. Move just one or two Kodama in a straight line. I don't know. I, I Take the top branch from the spot you left and grow your tree. Yes. You do get to build the things. Take care to balance your tree as you build. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing if you knock it over, then you lose. Try to complete your goals. Cool. What's how much? How much dollar bills do you guys want? How many? How many monies? Twenty-four monies. Twenty-four monies and uh, shipping and taxes are where are we at? I can't read the words. Shipping and taxes are not included and will be charged in the pledge manager. This is becoming standard, kids. Um, uh, you can get this and another game. So it looks like the game's just $24. That's a good price point. I'm probably in on that. Do they have the estimate on shipping? Boop, 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 boop. $5. $29. I'm, I'm pretty much there. I'm pretty much here for that. I already know that I like the game from playing the card game. Even if it's a little different, I, I dig, you know. Oh, hey, there's Haley. When each Kadama grows hey, Haley, older, they get a tree of their own, and they have to make sure it grows up strong and healthy. From trunk to twig, they have to keep it green and growing. This makes it the perfect home for flowers, mushrooms, and critters of all kinds. Make a tree full of branches and leaves and make the forest more beautiful than ever. You'll use your Kudama meeple to gather branches from the forest. Each branch has a feature and a Kudama. Whenever a player this is adds awesome. a tile to their tree that doesn't match the feature or kudama of the connected branch, they will draft a new goal card. Players will score victory points based on the goal cards they've completed. The nice. player with the most victory points wins, starting with the youngest player, that's me, <laughs> will take turns. Each turn involves three total steps. Step one, move a kodama meeple. 
Step two, grow your tree. Step three, draw a gold. I love the sass from Haley. She's like, bang, bang, bang. We'll add 12 branch tiles to their tree. They'll start removing one of their kudamas to a new stack of branches. Then we'll add one. All right, so, yes, I'm in. I don't even because and the reason like some I can I can make this decision much earlier is because this is based off of a card game that I've played and I know I like. So in the price points, easy twenty nine dollars shipped is yes. Like that's just yes. So I don't even need to we don't need to go much further. That's yes. Fickle, a fairy board game featuring the art of Amy Brown. I'll be honest, I don't know who Amy Brown is. This is also first created. It is funded. Um, and the game is $39 with $12 shipping. That is a, gets it to 51. Okay. All right. Let's see what it's, what it's about. Minute 11. The moon is on the rise. The fairy families gather for the ritual of ascendancy. It is time to renew alliances and appoint a new queen, which could be you. In Fickle, you have five rounds to build an alliance among the fairy families. Choose the order of your neighbor's cards to outwit their plans. Every fairy wants to be on your council, and they offer their powers to aid you. Use those powers to gather a fairy from each family. Be careful, more is not always better unless you shoot the moon and build the greatest fairy force. The player with the most favor wins the crown. Customize each game of Fickle by selecting fairy families that match your favorite play style. Unleash the power of the fairy world. Sound easy? Well, fairies don't stay in one alliance for very long. They tend to be... Fickle! Fickle. I got it! It took me a second. I was actually kind of slow on that. Well, this looks like a card game, so I'm curious why it's so expensive. Oh, three to five players, so you can't play this two-player. That's going to eliminate some of your uh, your peeps. So the base game's a rule book, double-sided game board. Okay, uh, one phase token, eight round tokens, and 108 cards. Okay, so here is, I mean, it's funded, right? But there's a disconnect here. There's a lot of, I mean, 108 cards is just two decks of cards, two sheets of cards, and one. I feel like the pricing's off on this. This feels like a $29 game, not a $39 game. Um, so, and, I, and I've had this conversation in DMs a lot. And so I'll reach out to, um, like, I don't want to give any examples, but I'll talk to a, a creator who's, they've quoted a really small print run, and so the cogs of that project is really high. And so it throws off what the market is used to seeing. Like, I'm used to seeing that batch of components, and it be 29 to $30. So when I see 40, I'm like, it just sends off that red flag, right? Like, you're like, I, I, I. and I'm not saying, again, I'm here. I understand the plight of a small creator. You know, it doesn't matter that if you could do 5,000 print run, you know, you'd bring your cost down, which would lower your MSRP. But um, it's just what the market's used to. It's the market evaluation. And you can't, like, it doesn't, the market doesn't care about your excuses and, or your reasonings or your justifications. Justifications is the best word. They don't care about your justifications. They only care about what is ingrained in their head. And unfortunately, that's why like Amazon has ingrained shipping is free. So then when we charge for shipping, people just, they rail, they rail against it. I, you know, there's times that I get a, a shipping charge and I rail against it. You know, my famous Joan of Arc, I was going to back that game and then I saw it was like $45 for shipping. And I was like, no, I'm just not going to. And then we had a long conversation. That was a while back. <laughs> but there's just certain things that become ingrained in us. Oh, you get a coloring book. Well, that's kind of cool. Oh, it's an add-on. Oh, it's not, just, yeah, it's not that. Just, yeah. Uh, tray, that's cool. Crown marker, cool. I mean, the game looks cool, and I liked the idea of, of that, but... So it's 60 if you want all the stretch goals. Oh, and add-ons one through three. Got it. So they just package that together for you. Okay. Well, that's that's kind of cool. 
I don't need a coloring book, though, but my kids might like that. But I'm guessing if you're a big fan of Andy Brown and her artwork, then that's fun to get a coloring book of one of your favorite artists. Like, I would lo- who would love a coloring book from some of uh, David and Lena, Mr. Cunnington's favorite pieces of art through all their games? Come on. How dope would that be? Grim Forest, Tidal Blade, Santorini, Brass. Like, that'd be a. a I wonder if I could get, reach out to uh, Gavin and we could put together a Mr. Cuttington um, coloring book. That'd be freaking cool. Would y'all want a coloring book of that kind of stuff? I don't, I don't know. That's just because something's cool doesn't mean people will actually want it. You know? That happens a lot. And it's got to be more than five of you <laughs> to make it a thing. Um. You know what? For me, I think this is gonna be a pass. I'm I'm gonna come back. I'm probably gonna give him. I'm gonna go in for a buck, and I will do some more research on the gameplay. Oh, there's Amy Brown, illustrator. Amy Brown began painting in 1992 and has created over 2,000 illustrations. Amy is best known for her mini fairy images. Her inspiration is a moment in time, allowing viewers to see a unique story uh, created from their own experiences. Cool. Hey, Matt Paquette, what's up, bro? High five. Tsh. Matt is working with me on Bloodstone. He's my graphic wizard there. So he's an awesome dude. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it looks good. I like the idea. Uh, I, like, I like the card games where you're, you're, you're doing the whole, like, uh, uh, shoot the moon type of thing. I love that. Um, but this feels like a card game. And so it feels like it should be not $40. So that's my, there you go. Twisty Little Passages, first created by Caravel Games. Uh, they are funded. No, they need, wait, it's still going up. Boom, they are funded. I like saw into the future. Uh, they're funded by $50. And the game costs 25 bucks. I dig. Now, I, I picked this one out specifically because I saw one person back it. I looked at it in that little whole thing where you get the email notification. I checked it out real quick, and I was like, this is the kind of thing that I typically like. Minute 42. Perfect. 90 seconds. That's what you want. Very interesting concept. I enjoyed the puzzles a lot. Immediately getting drawn in that I can't read that fast. No one can read that fast. I am Rin. I am Groot. I am Lone. El Sassi? El Kasi? We should just have a video of James reading things that he can't read or pronounce. An amazing game book of unique dungeon crawl puzzle adventures. That's what I remember reading going, yes, please. Get keys, powerful equipment, enchanted artifacts, and life-boosting elixirs. Each level, a handcrafted dungeon crawl puzzle. Avoid tricks and traps. To defeat the level boss. Looks like a bug. Only one way to survive. By winning? A unique puzzle adventure experience. So anyway, cool. I dig. So it looks like, oh, Spiralbound book. So you're gonna get, this is a cool setup, right? Uh, I got a little bit of vibe from, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, fabled story stuff. Fables. There we go. And when you open that book, it's a really cool experience. Like you've got all the rules and all the all the information that you need on this side, and you got a map to do the things on this side. So I really like that setup. Probably I kind of want to make something like that. I know Tim and I have been talking about a Grim Forest RPG slash narrative game that we've we we'd concepted one at one of our last retreats where. Um, it's fun because Tim and Ben really like to go. Uh, they're they're outdoorsy. They camp a lot and they go out. And so we were we were getting out away from the table and we went on a long walk and we just like we threw out a whole narrative for the Grim Forest, uh, uh, almost like a faction war within the Grim Forest. Uh, so anyway, we need to develop that into a game. I might like to use this system where you have a book and you're flipping it and you've got all the information and you got a map. Or something that you're playing, or you know, executes that that scenario. I really like that setup. Do you guys like that setup? Is that something that y'all would be interested in, as far as like in game mechanic-y type things? 
Twisty Little Patches is a book of puzzles with a dungeon crawl theme set in a variety of locales. Each two-page spread in the book features a new area to explore and puzzle to solve, comprised of a story page and a map page. Draw right on the map to track your progress, stats, and inventory. Solve the riddle of the dungeon. Wow, something just blinked over there. Uh, solve the riddle of the dungeon and survive to reach the next area and advance the story. So I'm already in. Like, I love that. Like, that is very appealing to me. Uh, how to play. Uh, explore each level to gather keys to open doors, defeat dangerous enemies, find life boosting elixirs, acquire equipment to power up, choose which enemies to fight and which to avoid, which doors to open and which equipment to obtain, defeat the deadly boss at the end of the area to win, discover the correct strategy for navigating each area safely and solving the puzzle. Oh, there's an MVM preview, so I will go back and watch that. All right, all right, I want this for the price point and for what it does, and I can play this on my own, and I can sit down, and I can, and I know that selfishly, I know I've got a project in the future that I might want to do a similar type of thing. Cool, like this is good product research, aka I like to play games. Uh, I don't know what a ten dollar web credit is. What do they do with the web credit? I uh, oh, and a gold credit. And a platinum credit. I'll go back and figure out what those are. I'm assuming they're down here somewhere. Uh, I don't see it. I'm sure it's in here somewhere. They could have done a little bit better job there of laying out the specs of each bracket of the pledge. So if, if creators, if you're watching this, go back and add a section that... Uh, has this bracket just like you have this key features that's like boom here's the $25 one here's a visual of what you get and list it out bullet point style oh here's our 35 here's what you get bullet point style and, and give us the visual so we can see because I don't know what these credits are and I don't see I'm sure it's in here somewhere uh, I just don't want to uh, harass or make you guys watch all this but I'm not seeing it on a quick glance. And that's one of the good things about headers, right? They help you see the information quickly. You can parse it and get to what you're trying to see. So, boom. Twisty little passages. I'm, I'm going to be on that for the $25. I, Akion, Ikion, Ikion. I got nothing, kids. I got nothing. This is from the team that tab Tabula. Uh, games uh, that did uh, Mystia. And that game that had the really big snake. Uh, it is obviously doing very, very well at $315,000 with 17 days to go. Our game is going to cost for a base, looks like 106 bucks. Or you can get this and the other game from before for 190 or you can be all in for all three of their latest games at $212. Rado has a quote here. You are really in for a treat. Nifty. Let's watch. On this cold planet, the sunless day dawns. Comb is the most valuable resource blooming in harsh, wild regions. Few brave seekers are destined to venture to past its power. Each move needs to be devised carefully. Deploy machineries. A lot of plastic in this game, which is probably driving our costs up. But if it's cool and adds to the gameplay, I'm obviously, I'm obviously their target market. It's a cool looking piece of art with the, I guess it looks like a big stone. Yes, yeah, driving through the mini's back. Complete your quest. What if I don't want to complete my quest? What about that? Did you think about that? That mini is big. That is a very large mini. I hope it's actually that big and that wasn't just like a misrepresentation. Let's go looking. So this is an expensive game. Oh, yep, 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 yep. That's, that's got to be what it is. That is a great... Look, uh, creators. That is a great instant 
first thing that I see when I scroll down is my what's in the box, really well laid out, very grabbing. Like I look at that and I'm like, I want that. Look at those colors, look at those minis. They laid it out in a very nice visual, visual way. Oh, that's cool. They put a current stretch goal right there. So like you don't have to go to the bottom. It's like, hey guys, this is what we're currently working on team. Hey team, here we go. Pledge levels. So like I was talking about in uh, Twisted Little Passages, first thing out of the gate, this is what they're hitting you with. They're visually showing you the pledge levels and the breakdowns right from the gate. So thumbs up on uh, campaign structure. Inside the box, bam, what am I getting? I'm getting one oversized mini. That, oh man, this is like a, this is a how-to on how to lay out your Kickstarter page. Team, look at this piece of art. You've got the art in the background, a nice overlay of the sculpt. The lighting on the sculpt is great. Yeah, team, yeah. This is looking good. This is a good looking situation. Uh, so, a lot of plastic. That's weird looking. <laughs> Scavengers have the faces on them. I like it a little. It's kind of in that weird way. It's like a chainsaw harvester situation. The infestin, infestation. The infestin? Look at this hand. It's a transmuter. Oh, that's cool. The parasite colony. That seems like a bad thing. Components. They've got a lot of them. Uh, the fall rule book. Is that a different game? It's a standalone cooperative game that you can play by just combining the components from both this game and the previous game. Disruption of that, okay. Is that, this is a different game. I mean, it's a previous game, but that's a little confusing. Oh, I guess if you buy this game, you get this rule book that makes a standalone cooperative game that you can play by combining the components with a previous game. Okay. Aha! 110 millimeters. That thing's big. That thing's huge. That's freaking dope. Looks good, too. It's not just a big lump of plastic. Uh, cool. They've been cranking out some of the... Uh, they've got stretch goals, lots of stuff. Stuff, 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 stuff. Gameplay overview. Check it. Become a seeker and lead your co your convoy in dark, cold lands. Deploy your machines to claim control of these regions before your rivals do. Search for... Quam, quam, came, quam, com. Relics and artifacts and use these resources to shape your strat. Beware of the ancient colossus and the infestation it carries with it. Relentless movement. Eradicate the infestation before it reaches critical mass and compromises your mission. Uh, Rado's covered it, so I'm gonna, I'll watch that at a later date. Sounds cool. So, wait, gameplay overview. This is... The fall. Okay, this is, I guess, when you combine the things from a previous game. Ah, combine the components of both this one and the other game and create a completely standalone game called... That's kind of neat. I don't have the other games, but like this game makes into another game. So it's almost like a, a Century Spice Road combined with its other games to make more of a game. Okay, I dig. And then they have a how to play on that. Got it. And then... Hey, here's that game if you didn't get it, like me. I didn't get this game, Miss Mystia. So here's an essential edition in case you need that to be able to combo everything together so you can do all the things. Dig. And then I'm and then there's reviews of that because it's got an 8.2, okay, and a seal of approval from the dice tower. And then stretch goals. Cool. All right. Wow, there is a lot of stuff on this page. Holy wow, that is a bit overwhelming, not gonna lie. Okay, well, I'm in for a buck for sure. I need to, anytime the game costs, oh, I can't hate the way Kickstarter page does that. You have to like make it move to grab the cursor. Um, anything, anytime the game costs this much and they're they're pinging my FOMO on the, I probably want to want to check out that combo game. So that means I'm at least going to have to go into here because if I'm not mistaken, this Volia Finirion situation dragon snake mini i don't think that game's related to this one so um i'm looking at 190 bucks to be able to get the full experience because i didn't get the previous game but i'm essentially getting three games because i can play them th three separately so if you look at it like that then it's like they're 80 dollars a piece <laughs> i don't know i can justify anything uh i think i'm in for a buck on this 
and I want to do a little bit more research. I'm going to go watch, probably watch Rado's run through and then decide. But I like every, the way everything looks, and I like minis. Um, it's just whether or not, do I think I'm actually going to play it? Last but not least is Mammoth. Uh, this game, I think, just launched. Yes, I think so. And it is only at $300. So this is a game that has had almost zero pre-marketing whatsoever. I did not hear about it until this morning when I saw someone else back it. I've heard nothing about it. Oh, wait, I, my, my page hadn't updated. It's got 1300 bucks, But it's had no pre-marketing. Soaring Rhino tells a story, a story about real science, a real place, and a very real effort to bring back one of the most iconic species to ever walk planet Earth. Walk. The science. In a Harvard Medical School lab in Boston, Massachusetts, a team of geneticists led by Dr. George Church is working on combining the DNA of the extinct woolly mammoth with that of the existing Asian elephant. A new animal will be born. The place. In Siberia, ecologist Sergei Zimov and his son Nikita have spent decades preparing land for the introduction of large herds of animals. These herds will trample the overabundance of trees and vegetation which have choked out the once massive grasslands. These grasslands, known as the Mammoth Steppe Biome, helped keep the permafrost frozen and prevented a massive release of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. It's very sciencey. The game. Over 12 months of creative development and over 200 hours of playtesting, the game designers of Soaring Rhino have created Mammoth, a tile placement game that features players moving their herds around Pleistocene Park clearing the invading forests and transforming the biome into a vibrant, healthy landscape of wildflowers and grasslands. Players place tiles to grow their specific color of flowers and increase the size of their path as their mammoths and megafauna move throughout the plains. The game has both competitive and cooperative versions of play and is aimed at all ages, eight and older. <laughs> we are very excited getting about a very like uh, mid 90s Jurassic Park the vibe from the benefits. like the, the music and the graphics on this I, I'm, I'm a bit confused okay tantrum house has done the thing cool so looks like the game's 40 bucks Does that shipping is free for the US so 40 bucks is your is your is your in there I couldn't tell if that was like a real science thing or if that was like uh, satire or if that was like real scientists that have been studying something they wanted to make a game and now I, I don't know this a, I, I didn't really follow but the game uh, we do have a playthrough video that's cool so I can go back and check that um Mammoth has some fun twists on the tiling genre from Jonathan Liu at Geek Dad. Um, what's in the box? Got some mammoths, got some tiles, got some stuff. Got a bunch of stuff. Got stuff. Game rules, cool. Pledges, got them. Stretch goals, their first and only stretch goal is $200,000. All right, this is, obviously this is a new creator and there's a lot of mistakes here, right? Like, just in the page layout and the, 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 the structure of the campaign. Uh, it's a pretty high goal, $35,000 for a tile laying game that has no pre-marketing whatsoever. Um, looks like the only reviews they aligned up were with Tantrum House, which is a great a great set of folks to work with. But, you know, where where is the... the there needs to be more. There needs to be more, especially if you're new. If you're new, you have to err on the side of getting your games into a lot of previewers and reviewers' hands so that they can play the game and talk about it with their audiences. This is not going to fund. Sorry. Um, with this big of a goal and zero momentum out of the gate, it's just not going to fund. Um, I'll, I'll probably throw in a buck here just to follow along and maybe help out 
Uh, one comment. You know, like th there's zero buzz about this. The game does look a little mundane. Uh, the, the art cover looks great. I love the way that looks. But like looking at that, it looks pretty dated in, in the, the, the way that modern board games really package a game. So um, I don't know anything more about this, um, but it doesn't really strike me as something I'm very interested in, even though I typically like sciencey stuff. But then I, I also that video has confused me. I, I didn't know, like, it is it a science project? Or are they really trying to bring back Woolly Mammoths? Or was that just a play on the theme about what you're doing in the game? I don't know. I was confused. I'm overall confused. I do, though, I do love this piece of art that they have on the front. But that's not enough to make me back a game. So I'll probably go back. I'll, I'll back this for a dollar. And then I'm going to watch the game preview from Tantrum House because they'll do a great job of showing me the game. And then I'll watch some of the playthrough video and see if the game looks interesting as far as mechanics. Uh, then more than likely in this type of scenario, you're going to back this because you know it's not you know it's not going to fund at this point. Like it's just not going to happen. Um, so you're essentially getting on. It's almost like a way of getting on the mailing list for when they launch it again the second time when they relaunch. So and then hopefully they do some of the things that we're talking about. And then that's where like I like to follow along. So if uh, someone reaches out to me or they they um, you know are open to suggestions, then I can give some feedback on on that. So yeah, that that's Mammoth from Soren Rhino. Sorry guys, that, I know that sounds kind of like a bummer. Um, Jeremy says they relaunched, saw this last year. Swing Rhino is a good small publisher. Try out Pirate Tricks and Shifting Realms. Um, uh, Jacob says, yes, Mammoth Research is real like that. I still, I, they think it can potentially fix some issues with global warming. Oh, cool. Uh, don't put your retailer tier first. Yeah, that's, again, there's some, there's some, there's some flubs there. Um, I just, Jeremy says, I think they need help. The Van Hess brothers need someone to polish them up. Their designs are good. Okay, cool. Well, Jeremy, I'm definitely going to go back and watch the the actual gameplay of this and see uh, about the gameplay of this because, I mean, it does look interesting. And yeah, you're right. There's some there's some things missing, some polish there. But you can't come to Kickstarter without an audience, and you can't come to Kickstarter without uh, some sort of forward momentum. Look at what if you're if you're a creator, and you're you're watching this right now. And you want to you want to be successful in Kickstarter? Go look at what Peter Vaughn and Breaking Games are doing with Dwellings of Eldervale. That is how you create momentum going into a Kickstarter. They are absolutely crushing it. And I'm not just saying that because I got to play it and they they we did a we did a promotion for them. Uh, it's way outside that. I knew about this game a month ago and I knew a lot about it. And they've done they're everywhere. They've they've really done a great job the other thing is like they've made a game that looks good and they've you know they've done an awesome mechanic that instantly draws you to it and you want to know more about it uh, so then when i actually got to play it it was phenomenal the game is phenomenal i want it like i want it now i don't get that excited about that many games that are coming out now because we play a lot of games right like so it, it it dies down a bit but the game's so good so good uh, i loved everything about it anyway We'll talk. We'll cover it obviously when it's a live campaign. All right, team. That's the gambit for this week on what is James backing now. Obviously, uh, there's going to be quite a few of these. So if you follow me or don't follow me on Kickstarter, you should. So just go onto my profile, Drew City Games. Back me there. Follow me there. Uh, you'll get notifications in the future when we launch our own projects. But then you also get the notifications from me when I back things. And so if you are in that boat, you are about to get about twelve. 10 to 12 emails notifications from me. I wish Kickstarter would compile those into one, like at the end of the day, like send out like a, almost a summary of what your uh, your followers are back instead of like destroying our inbox. Um, especially on like a, like a CMON day when um, they launch a game and you're like, oh my God, I got 350 emails. Like that's dumb. I don't know why they don't turn that into a summary page or make it a summary page for each project. So, okay, I'm going to get... On a big day, I'm going to get eight emails from Kickstarter, but I can see all of my friends that back this one project. I think there's a way to clean that up, Kickstarter. Nobody wants their inbox spammed. That's it. That's all I got. Until next week, deuces. Roll some dice. Play nice. I've been Van Norman. I owe you a dollar for that one. That's your saying, not mine. Ha <laughs> ha!